right, so let's go ahead and date this February 1st. All right, and we're going to take a look at Section 7-2, which is the substitution method that you were supposed to do for our last e-learning day. All right, and we'll also do Section 7-3, which is, oops, that didn't look like a 3, which is the elimination method. All right, so these are two pretty intense methods for learning how to solve a system of equations. All right, we're to the place where we kind of did one even on that, that first virtual day that we had last week. You had to solve a system by graphing, and you had done that in middle school. All right, so I am going to touch on that just real quick before we get going. All right, graphing is the other method. All right, and we had talked about that. You had watched some videos about that as well. All right, when you take two lines and you graph a system, you've got three options that occur, and that's it. They cross when you graph them. All right, when they cross at that point right there, whatever that point is, maybe, you know, I'm going to denote it generically as XY, then XY, that point at which they cross, is the solution. All right, so in other words, doing it graphically, you find the X coordinate by looking on your graph, you find the Y coordinate, okay? So by graphing, you're finding the solution just by looking at the graph. When we do substitution, when we do elimination, you're going to find the X coordinate, but you're going to do it algebraically, and you're going to find the Y coordinate but you're going to do it algebraically. All right, so these are three different methods for solving a system. All right, one's graphical and two is algebraic in nature. All right, if I graph two lines, you know, we know how to graph them in slope-intercept form, they could come up and they would be parallel. All right, that means they wouldn't cross. When they don't cross, there is no solution. So this one is a no solution. And then the other option would be when we are graphing two lines. You graph the first one, and then when you go to graph the second one, it ends up being exactly on top of the first one. So that doesn't show up the best it possibly can, but they end up being the exact same line when you graph them. You graph the first one, you graph the second one, it lands right on top of the other one. All right, and this is the one where we were writing, if you watched the video like you were supposed to, it showed infinitely many solutions because every point on those lines they had in common. All right, so that's a quick review over the graphing. All right, now the substitution method, which 10 of you, this will be review for 10 of you because you did do the video notes and watched it. All right, the whole point of substitution is you're substituting something for something else. All right. <clears throat> So we'll do at least one, maybe two examples here. It's really common on the substitution method for them to give you, like, say, a y equals a 4x minus an 8, and then a y equals a 2x plus a 10. So, yes, you could do it graphically and possibly get the answer. All right, but if the directions tell you to do it by substitution, that's when you're going to do this algebra stuff. All right, substitution means you're going to take something and substitute it in for something else. All right, thus the name substitution. All right, now this one, the way this one is set up, you got to think a little bit. Okay? This first equation is telling you that y and 4x minus 8 is the exact same thing. They're equal to each other, so they mean the same thing. So I could substitute the 4x for minus 8 for a y anytime I see a y. The second line is telling you the exact same thing, that 2x plus 10 is equal to a y. All right, so if this quantity is equal to y and this quantity is equal to y, then I technically should be able to set these two things equal to each other. Okay, so my equation that I would be, let's switch to red, my equation that I would be working out would be a 4x minus an 8 is equal to a 2x plus a 10. All right, but that's a, you have to understand conceptually what you're doing. I'm substituting those values. They both are equal to y, so I can say they're equal to each other. Now, everyone in the room should be able to, at this point, solve this equation. All right, move the letters to the left, move the numbers to the right. So subtract 2x. All right, 2x minus 2x goes away. All right, and then we, when I did this originally, and we originally taught this, we did it all in the same line. We added 8, and we added 8. 
So minus 8 and plus 8 went away. Okay, that allowed you to move the letters to the left and the numbers to the right. These are like terms, so now 4x minus 2x gives me a 2x, and a 10 plus an 8 gives me a 18. Then I can go ahead and solve, divide both sides by 2, x equals 9. So I found x, okay, right there I have found x, but my solution is going to be, this would be if these were graphed, they would cross each other. My solution is going to be an ordered pair. So at this point, I have the x coordinate because I've algebraically solved this and I found x and in an ordered pair, the x is first. So I have part of my solution at this point. Okay, now what I have to do is I've got to go back and figure out what my y value is. All right, so it's almost like a step one and a step two. All right, so this is our step one. All right, and then now I need to do a step two. All right, I've got to find y. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back up here and look at these two original equations. And honestly, it doesn't matter which one I do. I could use the top one, I could use the bottom one, but if I know what x is, I can plug x in, work it out, and figure out what y is. So, when I'm finding y, I'm going to come back to one of my two original equations. I'm going to randomly pick one. I'm just going to go with the top one. So, y equals 4x minus 8. I know what x is. So, I can put x in. I can put that 9 in for that x right there. I can put it in. All right, so then I'm going to have a y equals 4 times a 9 minus 8, 36 minus 8. I don't know what 36 minus 8 is. 28. Unless I did the math wrong real quick. 36 minus 8, I believe I'm right, but I'm going to double check because we don't want to have a mistake. Yep, it's 28. So now I know my y value. Since I know my y value, I can come back up here, write it as an ordered pair. This is my actual answer. When you solve a system of linear equations, you have got to have the answer either as an ordered pair, or you write no solution, or you write infinitely many solutions, because those are our only three answers. An ordered pair is an answer, a no solution is an answer, or an IMS infinitely many solutions is an answer. Alright, so this was from the e-learning day that you were supposed to watch videos on last Wednesday. Okay, now, they're named what they're named for a reason. Because the name tells you what to do. On substitution, we were substituting a value for something else. Alright, elimination means that we're going to try to eliminate some of our variables. Okay, so they named them to try to help you remember what you're supposed to do. Alright, now, again, my goal, my end goal is going to be what? My end goal is going to be to find that ordered pair where they cross. Maybe it would be a no solution, maybe it was going to be this, but probably it's going to be the one where it crosses and I'm trying to find that ordered pair. So, I need to find an x and I need to find a y. If I eliminate my y's, I can find x. If I eliminate my x's, I can find y. Okay, so there's a variety of different approaches to do this, but the bottom line is I'm going to eliminate stuff and then find the other letter. Okay, so this would be the easiest type of problem that you might see. Maybe say a 5x minus a 6y is equal to a negative 32 for my first equation, and then maybe a 3x plus a 6y is equal to a 48. All right, now the way we're going to eliminate is we are going to add the equations. All right, that's going to be in general. We're going to add the equations together and then hope that something will fall out or become zero. All right, so on this one, before I even start, I'm going to look at my x's. If I add those two, are they going to fall out? 
No, because 5x plus 3x is going to give me an 8x. All right, look at my y's. Negative 6x plus 6x. If I add that, is that going to become 0? So this one is easy because you don't have to really do any work. You can just immediately start to add. And if I add everything going down, this and this is going to be eliminated. I'm going to add these two, which is going to give me an 8x. I'm going to bring the equal sign down, except I'm not going to write it all the way over here because that would be a big gap. I'm going to add 48 and negative 32, which is going to give me a 16. And then now I can solve that nice little equation right there, so x is going to be 2. Okay, so x is going to be 2. Now, do I have part of my solution? Yes, all right, because what's my overall solution is going to be an ordered pair, right? So I have the 2. I just have to find the y. Okay, so I'm going to do the find the y just like I have even in the substitution part. All right, this is basically going to be my step 2. I need to find a y. All right, so looking at those two original equations, they're both pretty bad. I mean, that's got an 80, 32, that's got a 48. Those are kind of big numbers. So it really is not going to matter which one you choose. All right, the math is going to be, you know, a little bit challenging regardless of which one. So when you can't, I mean, it doesn't make any difference, just pick one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pick that top one because it doesn't matter. So I'm going to do the 5x minus the 6y equals the negative 32. All right, I know what my x value is. My x value is 2, so I'm going to put that in there and work this out. So I'm going to have a 5 times a 2 minus a 6y equals the negative 32. Okay, so 5 times 2 is 10 minus 6y equals negative 32. Okay, so, so far so good. Now I'm down to a two-step equation. I can subtract 10 and subtract 10. 10 minus 10 falls out over here, which is what we want. I have a negative 6y. Don't drop that negative. Negative 6y. And then when I add these two, negative 42. And then that divides out pretty nice. Divide both sides by that negative 6. Negative divided by negative is positive. So y equals a uh, positive 7. So now I've found my y. I can come back over here, and I can put my 7 in for my actual solution. All right, so, but as you can see, looking at all of the problems that I've done so far today, you cannot do this in your head. You cannot just miraculously look at this stuff and then come up with all these numbers. All right, so that's why through middle school we kept saying, show your work, show your work, show your work. You've got to write this stuff down and stay organized so that you can follow it and then you can work the problems out.